In this video, I'm going to talk about how any skillful communicator has to memorize thousands of idioms, stock phrases, formulaic expressions, and so on. And I'm going to talk about what the implications are of this point for AI models of language. I'm Bruce Lambert from HowCommunicationWorks.com. This is a channel where I teach you about communication skills so you can improve your relationships, succeed at work, and be more confident. Recently, I posted a video on OpenAI's impressive language model. I'll link to that video above so you can take a look at it. If you don't know what this is, OpenAI is a software company that produces artificial intelligence models that do a variety of different tasks and vision and so on, but they also produce language models, models that can understand and produce human languages like English. And about a month or so ago, they produced a very impressive language model that showed how capable uh, the AI has become producing and understanding language, and it got a lot of media attention, and I made a video about whether we should be scared about this sort of model and so on. Not surprisingly, because of all the media attention this model got, there was a lot of criticism of the model itself. Some of the criticism said basically that this model was nothing new, that all of the other state-of-the-art language models could do similar sorts of things, and that this particular model was getting a lot of publicity only because they had a good PR department. That may be true. I'm willing to grant that that is true. Nevertheless, if you're not an AI researcher, the results of this language model were still incredibly impressive. I'm someone who I consider myself a kind of moderate expert on these AI language models. I've been following them for a long time, though it's not an active area of my own research anymore. And I was stunned at the quality of the language that these models could now produce. It really was indistinguishable in many ways from language that a human being would produce and better in lots of ways than, than language that many human beings produce who are not skillful writers or speakers. One of the other criticisms of this language model was that it memorized phrases and that in this way it was sort of cheating. This was the accusation that this great big model, which is a big neural net or deep learning model, looked at billions of words and looked at the patterns of patterns of association is what words tend to occur close to one another after looking at billions and billions of words. That base, that's basically statistically what these models learn. They learn patterns of co-occurrence of words so that when you find one word, you know what is the most likely next word, or if you have one word to the right, you know what the most likely word to the left would have been and so on. And if you show a model billions and billions of sentences, it will be able to learn these statistical associations very accurately. Well, one critic on the machine learning subreddit said that this was cheating, basically, that the model was memorizing phrases and then reproducing memorized phrases. And they thought this was a really legitimate criticism. <laughs> and what I thought is, here's a guy who doesn't really know how language works. Normal human language use involves a tremendous amount of exactly that, of human beings reproducing memorized phrases at a very high rate. The best estimates we have are that normal, natural human language use consists of between 20% and 50% of these recycled memorized phrases. <laughs> so any computer model that didn't memorize and recycle these phrases would in fact not be modeling human language use. Now underlying this is a deep theoretical controversy in computer science and in linguistics, one that's based on uh, Noam Chomsky's uh, notion of creativity. Noam Chomsky is a famous linguist who said, you know, 50 years or so ago that you know, all you needed to be creative in language is sort of a set of rules and then a set of words that the rules applied to. And then from those rules and those words, you could uh, uh, create an infinite number of different sentences. And so this notion of creativity, at least that formal notion of creativity, was a basic idea in linguistics. So this idea that we are infinitely creative became a kind of fundamental 
building Black Notion among some linguists, at least among these so-called Chomskyan linguists who believed in rules. But during the last 50 years, as computers got more powerful, this rule-based approach to language became less popular, and instead this kind of massive compute intensive approach to learning statistical associations between words became much more popular. In fact, the overwhelming majority of language tools which you now encounter, voice recognition, chatbots, spelling correction, uh, every language tool which you encounter on Google or Facebook or Twitter or in an Apple device, is based on these statistical patterns of association that have been learned by listening or, or uh, reading millions and millions of examples. So this idea that memorizing phrases is cheating is really a kind of computer scientist's understanding of language. And someone who doesn't understand what's called linguistic pragmatics or discourse, which is how language is actually used uh, and not some kind of pure linguistic or computer science understanding of language. But people who actually study language use know that uh, normal language users recycle these phrases at an extremely high rate. Sometimes half of our speech consists of these multi-word utterances or formulaic expressions or situation-bound utterances. They go by many different names, but they all correspond to, or idioms, they all correspond to the same thing, which is patterns of words that kind of clump together or cluster together. They co-occur together at a rate much higher than chance would suggest. And they kind of exist as units. They exist as phrases. Uh, in another earlier video, which I'll link to above, I talked about something called the phrasal lexicon. The, a lexicon is like a dictionary of words that we have in our heads. But instead of having just a dictionary of words that we have to compose together into sentences, what we really have is a dictionary of phrases, or at least what we have in part is a dictionary of phrases. And we can access these phrases as units and use them as units. And it's much more efficient to do that way. And in fact, learning a language doesn't mean just learning the rules of the grammar and learning the vocabulary words. It means learning these thousands and thousands of phrases. As a result, some of the people who know this um, issue of idiomaticity, as it's sometimes called, are people who study second language learning. So let's say you grow up learning, uh, speaking English in your home, and then you try to learn Spanish or French or German or Chinese or some other language. And you realize learning the grammar and the vocabulary words is not enough. When you actually go to the country, you find you can't actually speak very fluently. And everyone knows you're a foreign language speaker or second language speaker, even if your accent is good, because you have not mastered the idiom. You have not internalized the phrasal lexicon. And what these second language learning researchers know is that a critical part of actually sounding fluent in a language is having mastered these multi-word phrases, these formulaic utterances, idioms, and so on, that constitute up to half of all, of all of our language use. So there's a couple of important implications. I think the first implication is that if you want to be a competent language user, you should, in fact, memorize lots of phrases. I used to think that this was kind of cheating. I used to think that, well, I should teach people like basic principles of empathy, for example, but shouldn't teach them exactly what to say. I now think I was completely wrong. I think the basic principles are useful, like name people's feelings, but I think I should try to teach people exactly what to say. And in my consulting, I do exactly that. I say, use this phrase until maybe you can memorize it and make it your own. Because I think this is the way we learn an idiom, the way we master a functional domain of language use is by mastering the idiom. And this is an idea that I've talked a lot about with my colleague and mentor, Barbara O'Keefe. And hopefully we're gonna be doing some research about this in the future where I can tell you more about it. So that's the first implication, to get good at language, read lots of good books and poems and so on, uh, listen to good speeches and take their phrases, steal them and memorize them and use them in your own language. It's not cheating, it's the way everyone does it. And you'll eventually make them your own. And the second implication is that these criticisms of computer models of language that criticize them for memorizing phrases and recycling them are just totally off base, they are invalid criticisms. In fact, any model of any proper model of language must recycle lots of phrases, must memorize lots of phrases, because that's what human beings do too. At least if you want to produce a model of language that produces human-like language, then it must involve 
memorizing and recycling lots of phrases or multi-word utterances or idioms or whatever you want to call them. So that's my point. It's a little bit theoretical, but I still think it has an interesting implication for learning skills. Uh, if you got some value out of this video, hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed to our channel already and hit the notification icon. Go on over to howcommunicationworks.com, which is our website. If you give me your email address, I'll send you an ebook about empathy where I think I do give you some examples of exactly what to say so you can get better at empathy. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time.